गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल स्टडी द मेटाबॉलिक फंक्शंस ऑफ कॉर्टिसॉल सो इट स्टार्ट्स विद कार्बोहाइड्रेट लिपिड एंड प्रोटीन नो लेट अस सी द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ कॉर्टिसॉल ऑन कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स द मेन इफेक्ट ऑन कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबॉलिज्म इज दैट ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस इंक्रीजेस सिक्स टू टेन टाइम्स दैट मीन्स द रेट ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस increases 6 to 10 fold now how this happens that we will see you can see the liver here in the liver for amino acids to get converted to glucose you require an enzyme so what cortisol does cortisol will increase this enzyme so when cortisol increases this enzyme obviously glucose increases so in short gluconeogenesis is again increased now how this happens how this enzyme is increased by cortisol this happens because dna transcription is activated now see this diagram this is the muscle what cortisol does cortisol will increase the mobilization mobilization means the transport of amino acids from the muscle to the blood vessels so once the amino acids in the blood increase their transport into the liver will also increase now since they are more in the liver more amount of glucose can be formed so amino acid mobilization from muscle increases because of cortisol now let's see what happens in terms of insulin we are still studying effects of cortisol on carbohydrate metabolism so we all know that the effects of insulin are it increases glycogen synthesis glycogen is the form of glucose stored in the liver so it increases glycogen synthesis it also inhibits enzymes involved in glucose production so glucose is formed less because of insulin in the liver now what cortisol does cortisol will antagonize these two effects when i say cortisol antagonizes these effects that means now glycogen which was earlier increased will now decrease the enzymes which were earlier inhibited will now no more be inhibited and they will be activated so in short insulin no more inhibits gluconeogenesis end result if insulin is not inhibiting gluconeogenesis obviously the glucose levels in the blood will increase now let us study what are the anti insulin effects of cortisol so this is a cell here this is a nucleus from the nucleus there is a transporter called glut4 now this glut4 is usually transported or translocated from the nucleus to the cell membrane it is a glucose transporter without glut4 if there is no glut4 glucose cannot enter the cell so what cortisol does cortisol will decrease the translocation of this transporter as this transporter is no more coming or is less coming to the cell membrane the entry of glucose into the cells is reduced since the entry is reduced the glucose now remains in the blood and this causes something called insulin resistance insulin resistance means the effect of insulin on the blood to reduce the glucose levels is no more effective that means even if insulin is secreted glucose levels do not decrease 
now how cortisol does this it decreases the expression and phosphorylation of two things insulin receptor substrate a and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase insulin receptor substrate a and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase also nadh should be converted to nad plus nadh is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide so nadh should be converted to nad plus nadh must be oxidized to allow glycolysis so what cortisol does cortisol will decrease the nadh getting formed to nad plus now if nadh to nad plus is becoming less will glycolysis take place no when glycolysis does not take place that means there is more amount of glucose available now both these enzymes insulin receptor substrate a and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase they mediate the action of insulin now cortisol will reduce them if cortisol reduce them obviously insulin effects are getting reduced this is called the anti insulin effects of cortisol now let's go 